Let's start off with a short and sweet alternating current explanation question. ON17 P41Q10. The mean value of an alternating current is zero. What do they mean by a mean value is zero? Well, you know the current graph, right? It going up and down. So what's the average value? Zero? Because you take the average of this, it's the middle. Hmm. Okay, so we say, oh, maybe the mean is zero. Explain why heating occurs when there is an alternating current in the resistor. Ooh, this is a good question. So if you connect an AC to, let's say, a resistor, why is it hot? Why does the resistor have heat when the mean is zero? Think about this for a moment. If the average current is zero, shouldn't the power or energy transfer also be zero? Question mark? Think about it very carefully. An alternating current means current move one direction, change direction, one direction, change direction. It looks very much like this, where you have uh, AC, and you see the red color arrows is showing the current. So the average current is zero. Okay, okay, we know that. Because if you have something alternating up and down, average is what? Zero in the middle. Okay, does that mean the power is zero? No energy transferred? No, it gets hot. And we can't see in the resistor, but we can see it if we put a light bulb there. So something like this. I connect light bulb. Ah, you see? Got energy come out, got light, got heat, got everything. So no, although current average is zero, you will have some kind of power transfer. Now the reason is because, how is power calculated again? Power usually, okay, see so we got resistor R. In this setting, we can say power is I square R. So at every point in time, no matter you got positive or negative current, you will still have a power uh, of this resistor. So there's always be going to be energy transfer by the resistor. So we must talk about that law. So we can say heating depends. Heating is a energy transfer, thermal energy converted. Okay, power is energy converted per unit time, and the energy converted here is from electrical to thermal energy, which is heat. Okay, so heating depends on I square because P equals I square R. And don't care which direction. So I also mention la, an independent of direction. Okay. So, so what? La? So you always have a positive value of P. So you can say I square is always positive. Okay, say so power is always positive. Okay, I'll add one more here. So I square and power is always positive. Negative power means, I don't know, energy ma, you got positive energy means increase. Negative energy means you lose energy. No such thing, la. you just always give out, give out, give out only. So there's no change in sign, no such thing, no gain, no loss. Just keep throwing out power. As long as there's AC current through it, you're throwing out power. So two bunks, one comes from, this, this question is all over the place, but you talk about heating depending on I square. Doesn't care about direction. No matter which direction, you will still have energy loss. Uh, then you can say, oh, I square and power is always positive. That's another one. Okay. Just if you're curious, how does the P power graph look like? If we use our I square graph on the top right and we try to draw a power graph. So let's say this is the current. Uh, dotted is current. You want to draw power. Uh. Power will then be square, huh? So something like this. No negative, always positive, just different amounts of power being dissipated by the resistor. So very hot. Next, transmission of electrical energy is frequently achieved using alternating high voltage. Why? Oh, we haven't learned this, have we? Well, there's a part on theory, the theory section about this. So why do we use very high voltage? In many countries, it is about 220, sometimes 240 volts. Some other countries in the Europe or US, 120 volt. But these are very high voltages. Peak to peak leh. Wow. This one I plug in can sort and die one. So these are very high voltage. Why do we use that? First thing, we use high voltage because it means a lower current. Because remember, P equals to IV. So if you have the same power that you need to use in a house or system, for the same power, 
A higher voltage means a lower current when you're transmission, uh, 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 transmitting electrical energy. So you're trans transferring the same amount of energy, but if you use a high voltage, it means lower current. So let's say that. Uh, let's say we want the same amount of energy transferred. If you make a voltage very high, current it has to be very low. So how is this advantageous? What does a large current do? Well, we can say the next point. When a lower current is used, ah, what happened? Ah? What happened to energy losses? So now we talk about current, right? Heating depends on I square. Oh, when a lower current is used, less power or less energy is lost, less power is lost during transmission. Ah, this is the reason why we use high voltage. So that the for the same amount of power, current is not as big. Current is going to cause heating, uh, melt the wire. No, 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 we don't want all those stuff. So the first one comes from you. What? How to think of your PIV? Higher V means lower current. And what does that mean? Less power lost during transmission. For lower current, less power is lost. Okay, so remember uh, from your... You think about the electricity in your house. It comes from where? It comes from kind of a power station. Where the power station comes from? Some generator area, either a hydro dam or a fossil fuel area. So you need to transmit power from the generator to a power station, from power station to your house. And we it's really, really far away. So we cannot afford to have this much of power loss. So we're going to transmit as very high power, but very low current. Okay, let's go. Why do we have an alternating voltage? Oh, we will learn more about this in the next section. But you have two choices, right? You either have DC or AC. AC, DC, DC, AC. Why we want to choose AC? Uh? Up and down, so troublesome. They have to do the maths. <sighs> the thing is, AC is much easier to control than DC. This is what I mean. So one of the reasons is that an alternating voltage, an AC voltage, can be easily stepped up, step up or step down using transformers. And you have to use transformer, right? So and the transformers can only work with AC. Oh no. Only work with AC because induced EMF is a rate of change of flux. If there's nothing changing, you cannot induce any current. So of course you will need to have some kind of alternating. But the step up and step down, which we will learn more in the next section, is actually ways to convert the AC of this um, power supply. So you see, for example, this one, blue color is 120 volts. Peak, 120 volts, peak, 120, peak, 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 peak. But then when you come to here, it becomes 240 volts. Ooh. Peak, 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 peak. How does that work? Magic? No, not magic. Magnetic. So you can, this is what we call a step up. You send in 120 volts, the transformer will transform it into 240 volts. And of course, you can do step down. Lah. Let's say it's like, oh, your voltage too big. Can we make it smaller? Okay, so incoming 120 volts, step down to 37.5 volts only. How do we do that? By changing the number of windings on a coil. We will learn more about this in the next transformer section. But yeah, any other advantages why we use AC instead of DC? So one reason is we can control voltage very easily. Step up, step down and transformer can only work if there's an AC. Otherwise, everything's broken. Other reasons. Uh, another one is that you can... You, you, how do you generate the electricity in the first place? Look at down there. This thing probably has some kind of generator. Uh, maybe hydro generator, something is moving inside there and that motion is converted to electricity. That generator can only work with AC. So generator, generators or dynamos. The main design is to they can very easily produce AC. A very nice AC. So if your machine is already producing that in the first place, from, power, from source to power grid to your house, might as well just use AC. 
So quick flashback, this is how it looks. Magnetic field, and you have some kind of rotating coil. That's your generator. Once you, if you have like water or air or something to push the coil, keep it moving. As long as it's moving, you're going to have EMF induced. And your EMF is going to be oscillating up and down. AC already, don't need to convert. Okay, let's stick with AC. Now, one last thing, which we haven't really learned yet at this point of this example, is that A is easier. Why we choose AC over DC? It's easier to convert, or the other word is rectify an AC and convert it into DC. Compared to the other way around. Oh, I tell you, uh, the other way around is... Uh, Invert or convert. I think the proper word is invert. Invert a DC to AC. So if you have alternating, very easy you can convert to DC one. Let's say current. Uh. So this one convert into almost a straight line like that. Easier. But it's very hard to go the other way. You get a straight line, you want to make it to oscillate up and down. Oh my goodness, the electronics is just... Last time I tried to make one uh, DC to AC converter, it was it was a mess. It was very complicated. And I did not expect it to be that complicated. I would If I knew this, I, would have, I wouldn't have done that project for my university. But yeah, it's easier to rectify AC to DC. Hmm. So any of these possible answers, if, as long as you have two suggestions, because they gave two marks, so why not? Two. Okay. So B2, this one is considered to easily step up or down and transformer can only work with AC. So this one already got two marks up there. Okay, so this one is one mark and down there is one mark. Choose to answer the question. So that is all for this question. I will see you in the next example where we look more at a, a different, different kind of calculations, different way to explain, of course, lots of graphs. See you in the next video.